The Yesu FT290R was the workhorse of Class B licensees in the 1970s and 1980s. This one, which is just about to enter its 35th year, has developed a fault. We're going to put it right. I only use the 290 for CW and unlike modern rigs it doesn't have a break-in function for keying. I initially have to uh, activate the PTT line via a remote switch and then I can apply keying um, through the key socket on the back panel. The problem we have is that when I activate the key PTT line it doesn't always engage so there can be a delay or sometimes it will work perfectly well. In this little clip here you'll see that um, it works once and then on a second or third attempt it will actually fail and it may then work afterwards. It's completely unpredictable. If we look at the schematic we can see that the PTT line runs a path through to the emitter of Q2011, just there. Um, and when Q2011 is turned on, it energizes that relay, RL01. In doing so, that energizes the TX 6.8 volt rail. That's very useful, because when we swing across through four or five sheets of paper, got these from a PDF file online, we eventually end up at a resistor. I think its number is R01. There's a six, TX 6.8. It goes to the left into R01. It then connects to D02, which is the red lead on the front panel. So here we have built-in test. If TX 6.8 is energized, the red lead comes on. I'm suspicious of the relay. This is quite an old radio and it's been round the track a few times as we say so I'm going to just see if I can check the voltages before I go any further uh, for the transmit and receive functions in fact the first one I'm going to check is the receive because it's pretty easy to get to that uh, that pin there um, so let's just see here's my uh, power supply here's my multimeter I'm currently in receive and sure enough we've got 6.8 volts on receive when I flick the switch it falls to zero and hopefully the TX line will go up back to receive 6.8 back to TX 0 that's absolutely fine now we're looking at the transmit side when I go into transmit activate PTT we get 6.025 back into receive 0 back into transmit 6.4 inconsistency there that sh there should be no inconsistency if that relay is working properly back into receive and we confirm that we've got 6.8 volts when we're in receive and 0 when we're in transmit this looks very much like a relay problem so we're going to investigate further we'll take the bottom off and have a look underneath right we're underneath the, um, the board now this is the other side side 2 if you like and the first thing that becomes very apparent to me is that somebody has been here before um, th there are four connections where I'm pointing to with my uh, little pointer here these are the four connections of the relay the, the other two terminals are right at the back um, this has been resoldered so this tells me that I'm not the first person to try to fix this and it's convinced me that I have in fact correctly diagnosed the problem so I'm going to take the relay out and then we're going to replace it okay so this is the relay it's a 5 volt thing quite small I have nothing that will fit in that hole uh, I'm going to have to use something else from my jump box the board is fine it came out very easily these are very high quality boards and uh, the next step is to connect some wires and put a new relay in. Okay, so if we look at the part of the circuit that we're particularly interested in, the relay area, I've sketched it out here showing how simple it is. It's just uh, an NPN transistor with a relay coil in the collector and the protection diode to catch the back EMF from the coil and the relay contacts then switch 6.8 volts to the TX or RX circuitry as required. It's a 5 volt relay, that's my problem, I don't have one, 
um, I do have a 12 volt relay and I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it by replicating or leaving this part of the circuit as it is. I'm going to replace the relay coil with a 3K9 resistor, put a 27K resistor in, in series with the base of bit of junction of a new transistor. I've used a 2N3904. Any NPN transistor will do. 2N2222 BC574, whatever you've got. The relay coil, my new relay coil, is taken from the collector of that transistor up to a 12 volt rail. There are plenty of those in this radio. It is a 12 volt radio after all. And I've added another protection diode uh, to protect the transistor from the back EMF when the relay is de-energized. And because I've um, created an inversion, the TR uh, poles are now reversed. So I've had to wire those in different orientation so it is um, in receive and transmit appropriately <laughs> depending upon the, the setting of the PTT line. Um, there's a little sketch here of the connections to the 2N3904 which may be of interest. Okay that's it from here we're going to go on now and see how I go about replacing my 5 volt relay with a 12 volt relay and then we'll see if it works. I will mount the new components on the relay itself, with the exception of the 3.9K, which can be fitted to the printed circuit board. This is the new sub-assembly, which I will wrap up in heat shrink and secure just beneath the uh, internal aerial tube. Here we see the location of the new sub-assembly. Um, it's near the old aerial tube but there's no worry about RF interference because all we're doing is switching DC. There's no RF on those wires at all. They're all decoupled. Here we can see the black and red power connections running along the back of the chassis to convenient points. There they are. And the white wire, whoop, that white wire there, is the collector of Q2011, and that makes its way off to the 27K on our new transistor. Here is the 3.9K in the um, location uh, to two holes, which were used for the relay coil originally, and you can see the other wires there coming from two from underneath and three from on top of the board, and then they wander off down to the sub-assembly that we've just located in the aerial hole under there. Speaker reconnected. Top cover screws going in. battery box back in. There's the relay that we took out. <laughs> Bottom cover back on and it's all done. The next thing to do is test it. I have 40 dBs of attenuation on the input to the analyzer, so we're looking for minus 6 dBm on the screen for the full 2.5 watts. We're slightly above that level. That's fine. The Yesu specification for receive sensitivity is 20 dBs signal to noise at minus 113 dBm. Here we are, minus 127, doing very well minus 113 it's perfectly good so I think we can say that the receiver and the transmitter are both working as they would have done when the radio was new I've carried out lots of tests on this um, repeated on and off TR switching etc it's all fine so I hope this has been useful to somebody any questions or comments, please let me know. I'll be only too glad to respond. 
So until the next video, thanks for watching and good luck with your Morse code and your amateur radio activities.